Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. So this week I'm back with another pastel tutorial. This week we're going to be drawing this cute panda. It's a giant panda from in, um, my favorite zoo, Paradisa. And this is one of my own references. If you are a subscriber to my newsletter, you got this one in 2021 December, or no, October it should be. So if you were a subscriber to my newsletter back then, you can just follow along with this one. So I just start with the underlayer here and I'm using soft pastels for this one, since it's conveniently in the colors that I have and it's pretty easy and basic to do the underlayer of this one. I just need four or five different colors and then a soft tool from Pan Pastel to blend it all together. For the background in this one I'm using soft pastels as well and I'm just using four different colors. A lighter green, darker green, a lighter brown, which is not really a very light brown but still lighter than the other one, and a darker brown. So to resemble the earth that he's walking on, the soil, as you will. And the top is just uh, green to resemble like forest or bushes in the background that he's walking through. So nothing much there and I just use a soft tool to blend this all out and go over that again with my hand to smooth every stroke out that you can see with the soft tool. Then it's onto the details which is my favorite part as you all know. For this one I'm using pretty basic colors. A lot of grays which are cool and warm grays, light and dark grays. And then the black, of course, for the patches of black within the panda. And a purple-ish color, dark blue color to get in some highlights within the patches. And a dark gray to go in between the lighter fur to make it look like there is some shadow underneath. And of course the light blue, as you all might know, to transition from black to white. Which helps to smoothen out that transition and make it look very natural and very realistic. So here you can see me just adding in the light gray strokes all over and I'm working from the left to right which is handy because of the glassine underneath my hand not to smudge everything else underneath and I go from left to right because I'm right handed of course. So this is one of the only times that you will see me use a very white pencil, literally just white. And it is to resemble the very highlights as you can see on the picture on the top and on the right part of his face which is where the sun comes from, from the right top. So that means that there is a lot of highlight right there and that's the only place where I will use the white. On the other hand, on the lower parts and the left part, it will be more in shadow, so it will be a little more muted. Then next to the eye, you can see me use that white again for the very brightest highlight. As you can see on the picture, there is a bright highlight right next to the eye because of the fur is a little more curved that way, I guess, and it catches more light than the rest of the cheek, for example, because it's lower and it doesn't catch as much, as much light. You will also see me go back and forth quite a lot on this one, as for example with the ear. I first used just the dark blue and a purple color to get in the highlights on the ear, because it's black underneath. But then I realized that they don't stand out too much, so I just wanted to use a more grayish color so that it can stand out a little bit better and you can see, you can actually see the highlights. Because right now on camera you pretty much don't see them, in real life you can, but on camera it doesn't resemble that good. So there are highlights, just not as visible on the camera. Then with the darker gray, as you can see, I just go in first on top of the underlayer and add in some of those darker hairs that you can see in between the lighter hairs. So this resembles like the hairs that layer on top of each other. The lower layers are cast in shadow, which means they are darker. Therefore, I use the darker gray. And then go on top with the lighter gray, which I use two main light grays, a warm one and a cool one. So this is the warm one and this, the cool one I use on top because of the highlights. It's more of a cool color and the warm one is more for the shadowed part of the panda. You will see me repeat this process quite a lot on this panda, which means pr practically all over the panda. I just go in first with the dark gray or with the very dark blue grayish color as you can see right next to the eye, because there is more of a cool undertone there. And then just go over with the light gray, either the cool or the warm one to resemble whichever fur is on top of the darker layers. And this we repeat on top of the whole panda face, at least for the white fur. 
the dark fur, so the black fur, it's just the same thing all over again, just adding the fur with black and then going on top with the highlights to resemble the cool and warm highlights, but mostly just cool highlights on the ears, that is, and on the eye as well. Then I'm just tweaking things around using that light blue to add in transitions between the black and the white. This is because if you use a saturated color to go between black and white, for example, you use a light blue. If you would go from black to like an orangey fur, like for a, a Bernese mountain dog, like we have, Raja, the orangey patches next to the black patches, next to the black fur, you can use a warm um, reddish color. So that's a saturated red color to help smoothen that transition out. But with white and black, you use a light blue color. So you just use a saturated color and it seems like the transition is much more smooth and much more natural than it would be. Because in real life, they don't have the blue or the saturated red hairs. But still, it makes it look like they do. So just take my advice and use it. Also, note how I change up the length and the curve of the fur. Like above the ear to the left, above the eye, I'm sorry, to the left a little bit. You can see that he has some fur going all over the place. That's because there, the fur from the top of the head and the cheek smashes into each other. So they have a different direction. So there should be a little place where all of the directions come together and they fade out. So that's that part. And on top of the nose, for example, the fur is way shorter than on top of the head, which is longer and on the cheek as well. So make sure that you add that in and you don't use all of the same strokes, very robotic or just the same curve because it doesn't look like that. A panda doesn't have a hairbrush, so they cannot put their hair all in the same direction as we can. The eye on this one is very small, so I couldn't add too much detail in there. I just used a brown for the base tone of the eye and then a lighter brown to go on top of that to give it some highlight and then for the highlight in the eye i used blue and purple to get in the highlight with white on top to get in the brightest point of the highlight then for around the eye where you can see the eyelids a little bit i used a little bit of gray and a little bit of that blue and purple again to add in some reflection on there but that's pretty much it and of course, a little side note here, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, because it really helps me out in growing my channel and reaching other people just like yourself, who might learn a thing or two by watching my videos, which I hope you do too, of course. And it helps me out, makes me happy, of course, all of that. So, you know, you are doing me a favor and you are doing yourself a favor because it makes you a great human. So thank you in advance. Same goes for the nose here, it's so small that you can't add a lot of detail to it, so just add in the nose basically and add in a little bit of highlight just around the nostril where you can see some reflection, as you would see in real life. But at least I wouldn't be that close to a panda in real life, I think. Or at least not on purpose. Then around the mouth there is a lot of shadow there, so you can see that I don't use bright colors there. Just on the very very low part of his chin on the front you can see a little bit of just white that's the one that catches some highlights from the bounced light so the light bounces back on the soil and bounces back to the panda on top which means that you can get that bright highlight on the top of his chin but for the rest it's just very dark gray brownish colors because it's very muted and he might be rolling around in soil for all we know because he's not that white or not that um, bright so that's it and last but not least, we add in those cute little whiskers, which stand out because of the background and make it look like he is really alive and smelling something or searching for something in the wood. Who knows what he wants to seek? Maybe some bamboo to chew on. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope this helped you out in using white and black and making you see that white and black isn't just white black because we only used black for the brightest highlights here and black of course for the for the ears and for the eye and everything like that but with highlights on top so if we would paint this panda just using white and black it would be very dull and it would not seem like it's a living thing so keep that in mind if you are drawing white or black fur that you almost don't have to use white <laughs> 